Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Paladins of Voltron, an unofficial podcast about the Netflix original series, Voltron Legendary Defender. And after 13, 14 episodes, I can now say that smooth as butter. Joining me this week, as every week, is the man, the myth, the legend, the one, the only, well, one of four on Facebook, Jeremy Dennis. Jeremy, how you doing? Good. How are you doing? Don't you love my introductions? <laughs> Yeah, they're great. I wouldn't either. I don't blame you. <laughs> <clears throat> so on this, our final episode of season two, I'd like to remind you that you can follow us on Twitter and Instagram. We are at POV underscore podcast. You can look us up on Facebook at POV podcast and email the show feedback at POV podcast.com. Or you can always leave a Comment on one of the one of our posts, any of our posts, all posts, or any of the videos we have on YouTube. Uh, you can do that at povpodcast.com, and that will get you to where you need to go for that. So without any further ado, I would like to start talking about episode 13 of season two entitled Blackout. This is written by Tim Hedrick and directed by Eugene Lee. And this is it. This is the final episode of season two. So let's get into it. Woo! Yay! The episode opens with the Paladins crippling Zarkon's ship so it cannot return from this part of this part of space. Zarkon calls for the ship's weapons to be bra- brought back online as Voltron slices the ship apart, piece by piece. Zarkon prepares to use his armor to face Voltron as Hagar readies the druids to attack using the Komar, the method that they have been using to destroy the numerous dead planets seen throughout the season. <clears throat> Once the ritual is complete, they are able to drain the quintessence from Voltron, rendering it un- inoperable. Now awake from opening the wormhole, Alora calls out to the paladins just as Zarkon arrives in his new robust armor. She uses the castle to protect Voltron f- from Zarkon's first attack, but in the bro- process, Zarkon is able to deflect her weapon blast back on the castle, disabling it and injuring Alora. Determined to complete their mission and save Allura, the team uses all the energy they have to reactivate their lines and battle the Gower Emperor. As the two robots wage battle, Hagar prepares another attack, but Voltron is able to avoid it this time. Back on the castle, everyone awakens to find it completely disabled. Allura has Koran and Slav fix the castle's systems, while she, Kolovan, and Antok go over to Zarkon's ship to face Hagar before she can attack Voltron yet again. <clears throat> Back out in space, Zarkon is able to separate the lions, incapacitating Shiro in the process. The fight with the druids continues, with Alora showing no signs of weakness from everything that has happened. Unfortunately, Antok falls to one of the druids with Hagar's help. Meanwhile, Shiro awakens to find the rest of the team getting soundly defeated by Zarkon as his lion activates its Bayard port. Sensing what this means, Shiro heads straight for Zarkon and unlocks his lion's winged ability, allowing him to pass through Zarkon on the psychic plane and retrieve his Bayard in the process. The team reforms Voltron for a final face-off as Alora takes on Hagar directly. During the fight, it is revealed that Hagar is Altaian and she lashes out at Alora, but Alora is able to use the contestants around her to fight back and Hagar phases away to live to fight another day. <clears throat> I did not rhyme that on purpose. Back on the castle, power has been resort- restored, but so has the power to Zarkon's ship. In space, the battle rages on, and Zarkon is about to overwhelm Voltron when Shira uses his Bayard to activate the Flaming Sword, destroying Zarkon's ar- armor. The team returns to the ship, which has already retrieved Alora and Kolovan, and wormhole away, but then they discover that Shiro is no longer in the Black Lion. On Zarkon's ship, the Galra leader is on life support as Hagar commands Prince Lotor to be summoned. So yeah, final episode, a ton happens. <laughs> well, okay, so I guess not a ton happens, but the battles are very, very involved. A, a lot happens in the battles themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> just let's just focusing on Alora for a second. So, despite everything that's happened to her, as far as you know. Uh, the having the wormhole, the giant you, Teledove, you know, do that, which she passes out from. She attacks Zarkon, which is then reflected back on her and hurts her again. And she's able to just come at Hagar and the Druids and really fight back. And then we find out she's actually able to use the quintessence. And I, I understood it as it was the quintessence that was pulled from Voltron that she was able to use, I think. 
because they, I think she can you they've mentioned before something about quintessence in reference to like her and the ship. Yeah. But, um, I think it's just the life force of whatever, ever, everything. Sure. Um, they did when, uh, when it was taken from Voltron originally with the, the, the coal bar or whatever that was called. Um, like it did kind of spread through and, and, uh, Hagar even says it's pure contestants. So may, I don't know if Laura was able to tap into the pureness of it or something. But and of course it was revealed that Hagar was Altaian, which as soon as her her hood flew off, I was like, oh, that's uh, that's not good. <laughs> I've yeah. seen I've seen those years before. <laughs> so that's a nice little twist, right? And then so with the battle between Vol- Voltron and Zarkon, like I could have said, uh, Voltron and Zarkon battle back and forth, or I could do what I did, which was, I listed out, you know, Zarkon overwhelms them, they come back. He overwhelms them again, they come back. Um, we we get Shiro able to retrieve his Bayard, and he even, he calls it Zarkon's Bayard at first, and then Keith says, no, it's your Bayard, and it actually does transform from its, you know, more menacing form when Zarkon had it to a more normal Bayard for Shiro. Right. Now, the Bayard is left behind when Shiro disappears, but Shiro is gone. Um, I'm, maybe Psychic Plane, maybe... <clears throat> who knows? I mean, he for all... I wouldn't be surprised if the next season opens with Shiro's, like, mind or soul, like, inside Zarkon somehow. And he has to battle his way out of there or something like that. Um, there's any number of things they could do. Or we'll never see him again in Keith Now Pilots the Black Lion. <laughs> yeah, or maybe it's inside the Black Lion. Ah, uh, yeah, there you go. That was another. Th- yeah, that was actually another thing I considered too. So it's perfectly possible. Or maybe he was just teleported to a hospital planet somewhere. Yes, that's right. Jeremy did remind me that in the original series, while in Japan, uh, Sven, right? Sven, yeah. died. Yeah, he died. was Shir- he was um, Shirogame in Japan, right? Shirogame, right? Um, while in Japan, he dies. In America, he goes to space hospital. Which apparently is probably where all the uh, dead dogs in space go to. They go to <laughs> they go to space veterinarian hospital. <laughs> yeah, they're they just live out a happy life. Yep. So, all right. So, I, I I've said plenty. What what were your thoughts on the episode? I loved it. it I mean, so many things going on. Um, you know, I, I like that they you you think after the last episode the battle is going to be fairly quick because, you know, the team, almost nothing went wrong for them in the last episode. And yep. here, almost everything goes wrong. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're able to disable Voltron fairly quickly. Zarkon's able to separate Voltron into the lions. Um, it just seems, you know, you're like, wait, is this, season going to end on a cliffhanger where you think that the team is defeated, but they actually, they come back. Um, I thought that the, um, the fight between Allura and Hagar was really good. Yeah. I, I just, I thought that the choreography on some of these fights was great. And then the, um, just, you know, Allura is a badass. (laughs) It's just, it's clear. And then we have um, the black lion. Th- those wings look awesome. And, you know, I like that they're the whole psychic plane stuff. That's just, I don't know, so, so many things in this episode I just, I loved. Oh, yeah. Um, well, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> obviously... Well, I mean, no, obviously, I, I, I think most people thought it was coming, but yeah, you know, yeah. H- Hagar says it's time to summon Prince Lotor, which, right. where's the lazy bum been this whole time, huh? He doesn't help yeah. Daddy run the Empire? <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, since it started, people were pleading, like, where's Lotor? Right. Well, Although I, he didn't start off in episode one of the original series. It took a while to get him in. Oh, there you go. There's just synergy right there. <laughs> but, I mean, I would not be surprised if we just find out his role is that he's he's actually in charge of the Galra homeworld. Um, yeah. Although 
we have been getting some hints of first looks of Lot- 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 Lotor. Lotor. <laughs> Next. Uh, blah, blah. It's almost like I've been talking for two and a half hours or something. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I guess it's almost like he's in like a gladiator pit or something. Um, so I don't know if maybe which he- they have referenced before the gladiator pit yeah. or the gladiator arena. Well, the gla- yeah, the champion stuff like that. Mm-hmm. The first row beast. Um, so yeah, maybe he doesn't want anything to do with the empire. Maybe he just wants to fight and beat people up. And then when he hears that his father's been almost killed, well, he's probably going to want to hurt the people who did that. So yeah, um, yeah, and it, you know, it's it, the show gives and it takes. Shiro gets his Bayard back. We get the flaming sword. All right, Voltron is it now. Whoa, where does Shiro go? <laughs> right. <laughs> so and. What I'm wondering at the beginning of the next season, Keith is going to say, hey, Shiro wanted me to lead the team. Yeah. Did Shiro tell anyone else that? Like, do do they know that Keith has been designated? You know, so there's going to be some conflict there, particularly with Lance. See, I can uh, like I could I could see Le- uh, Pidge and Hunk being like, OK, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I could see Lance. But at the same time. Like if that is the case, it'll last an episode. They won't. Yeah, yeah, out. they're not going to dwell on it. Right. But I can see there's going to be that. But y- you know, Keith is going to move in to Black Lion. Oh yeah, which is interesting because they've done so much um, development of Keith and his relationship with Red Lion. Yeah. So maybe they're going to put a lure in Black Lion. Who knows? But that's ooh, that's true. I mean, yeah. traditionally she was in blue. Right. And Bl- Lance and Blue are perfectly happy together. <laughs> right. <laughs> so there's no reason to change So that. maybe that'll be the twist that they put on it. Yeah. And even you know, though Keith could be leading the team. Right. And here's the thing. Like you just said, Alora's a badass. I'm perfectly right. okay with her in a black lion. <laughs> mm-hmm. I want her in a black lion. That'd be great. So Black looks good on everything. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, this is great. We actually have some stuff we can speculate about. Um, you know, our, how long will it be before we see Shiro? Is Shiro gone? How'd it work? Oh, God. Imagine if... Okay. I've literally thought about this zero seconds until just now. What if, like, somehow Lance became the Black Lion? <laughs> like, the Black Lance Lion... Obs- Shiro. Uh, Shiro. Dang it. Ah. Me and my name. Wouldn't be an episode if you didn't mix up names. Exactly. Of this, of Pavicacy, of... (laughs) I think I do it when I'm on transmissions. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, (laughs) uh, What if Shiro's just now part of the Black Lion? You know, that... They have a connection. And they actually... There's a great scene... Okay, there's a couple of great scenes at the end of this episode. The first one is when Shiro wakes up and sees all the other lines getting their butts kicked. And he goes towards Zarkon, and you see the split screen. You've got Shiro on one side. You've got the black line on the other side. So they're one at that point. Mm-hmm. So that could have something to do with that. The other great yeah. scene is, and what I was alluding to a couple episodes ago, where I, you know the cost cutting stuff. They go complete hand drawn anime, black and white. Oh, the, was there a little bit of color in there? there? There was each. Yeah, it was each person had their own color. Right. But yeah. it was just two tone right it's it's hand drawn in or at least they're i they might be able to fake hand drawn i'm not sure how exactly how they did that it goes it 2d hand-drawn, 2d hand drawn everyone's screaming as they're going after zarkon and it is freaking my favorite scene in the first two in this these two seasons it's they've done this great. once before mm-hmm. in season one i think i think yeah yeah. <clears throat> so, and you know, like I said, maybe they were cutting costs. If it did, fine, because it looked fantastic, and uh, I absolutely love it. So, <clears throat> yeah, and it's there. Yeah, and these the paladins get these connections, these lions. So, man, Shiro, yep. Shiro could literally just be the black lion now. That would be well, kind of yeah. Insane. I mean, I'm I'm wondering like my my theory that I just came up with five seconds ago <laughs> was uh, I bet black lion pulled Shiro into the psychic plane at the very last minute, you know, as Zarkon was attacking. Right. I could totally see to, that. To protect him. So maybe, you know, since you said they were one, yeah. you know, that would make sense that Black Lion knew he 
it, he could do something to protect them. Right. And I, you know, I try, I, we try not to get too in depth with the recaps because hopefully you've seen the episode and we don't want to take 30 minutes doing it. But, you know, the battle ends with the sword is in Zarkon before mm-hmm. it's flaming sword. Zarkon grabs Voltron's head and is, you know, shooting energy through it like he did before to separate the lines in the first place. And Shiro's in a heck of a lot of pain. I think the other paladins are, but they focus on Shiro. And that's where he sees the Bayard, <clears throat> you know, light up and he's, or the port light up and he shoots the Bayard in and we get the flaming sword. So yeah, there's a lot going on there. And Shiro is definitely in some pain. I'm sure the whole time Zarkon's also trying to pull the black line back to him because that's just what Zarkon does. Mr. Compulsive Obsessive about his line. Yeah, um, but the black line is fully on board with Shiro. Oh, yeah, th- at this point. I'm surprised it didn't just bite his head off or something. <laughs> so, yeah, the psychic plane actually make a lot of sense. Now, whether Shiro's able to leave the psychic plane, although I, you'd think the lion could pull him out because he's put him in there before, but... Who knows? Maybe all the paladins will have to go in the psychic plane. <laughs> Get all kinds of weird stuff there. Um, yeah, so there's some cool stuff to speculate on. And, yeah. you know, Zarkon is on life support. Um, I'm sh- I am I wouldn't be surprised if he made it, but he's probably going to be much weaker than he was and stuff. And, you know, hang or on. it's possible that Lotor could use this opportunity to kill his father and take over everything. Absolutely. Hagar, I think, is down. I don't think Hagar has any more druids. I think they're all dead. <laughs> if, if she has any, there's a couple. Unless she didn't have all of them on the ship with her. But, you know. Yeah. Uh, there, There's so little we know about Hagar. Right. I yeah. imagine we're going to get more characterization on her. Uh, obviously, Lotor. And I just, I want to get more history on all these characters. Yeah. In the next season. Yeah. And I think I want to say you've even speculated before that, you know, maybe in the third season, we'll get an episode where we'll see the original paladins or what happened with some of these characters. Um, I think that was you or maybe. Yeah. Girls. Yeah. Well, I mean, and we, um, I mean, we got that brief glimpse when black lion was taking Shiro to yep. its creation, but yeah, there, I yeah. wouldn't even mind a flashback episode where right. it takes us back to the original team. Here you go. Here you go. Shira's in the psychic plane, like you said. The other paladins go in to, to, to bring him out. And through that, all the other paladins get images of their lions, previous lives or previous paladins. And maybe that maybe it ends that way. And we get a whole episode of an adventure of the original, you know, Voltron team or something. Um, you know, I'm pretty sure... They haven't really shown, but I'm pretty sure it just came down to the fact that Zarkon just tried to take over Voltron and the other paladins, mm-hmm. you know, fled because they knew how powerful he was. Um, he actually, I wouldn't be surprised if maybe he killed some of the other paladins. Yeah, I would think that probably would happen. Yeah, so, um, yeah. Although, maybe it was the whole se- Prince Alphor separating the, the lions, the paladins flew the lions wherever they went and just died on that planet. Yeah. Because the Bay were the Bayards were with the lions. Yes. Good point. Oh yeah, yeah. Very true. Huh. So And and Yeah. Yeah. Keith is part Galra. Yep. Maybe original Red Lions pilot was part Galra or all Galra. Right. And and uh, he no. just spread his seed and, you know. Yeah. And Right, and we found... 10,000 years. Red Line was on the Gower ship at the beginning of season one? I think it was the Red Oh, yeah, yeah, it was. <clears throat> Sorry, I was thinking maybe Blue Lion is, was right. the Gower because that was on Earth. And... Maybe uh, maybe Zarkon is Keith's dad. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> then he would, he and Lotor would be brothers. Also, Keith would be really freaking old because it was 10,000 yeah. years ago that would happen. No, um, see, I think... Keith is a fraction Galra. It's oh, yeah. I mean, H- Hunk not looked. Not nearly pure. Hunk looked. His skin wasn't purple. So. <laughs> right. Are you seeing if my skin's turning purple? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so many wonderful moments this season. So, yeah. I mean, okay. So, Space Mall, we're going to call that our number one episode this year, probably. This season. Yeah, I think so. I'm go- I'm still going to give uh, Staying Alive a close second. 
I mean, I love the last two episodes, but you know, mm-hmm. like I said, Space Godzilla, Roe Beast. Like, I, I can't get over how awesome that was. <laughs> I mean, I, I like the Blade of Mamora. That, yeah. That one was really good. Yeah, that was a fun one for you to recap, too. So, yeah, I mean, there had there wasn't a stinker all episode or all season. Like I said, the only thing right. that kind of bothered me at all was Alora's. You know, they obviously did a they took the only knock against staying alive is, you know, they did exposition as opposed to showing us in a couple scenes. And even that wasn't a big deal. Like, obviously, we knew she had to get the ship off the planet. I just I she, they could have said nothing. And so it would have made sense. So, right. <clears throat> but yeah, like I said, it just would have been a little more believable as if like under her breath as she's controlling the ship, I have to get it off because, you know, I talk to myself all the time when I'm doing stuff and I don't say it out loud. I just say it under my breath. Yes, I'm straight. Yeah. I talk to myself. So it would make sense. But. Yeah. So um, any other thoughts? No, I mean, I just uh, I saw the very end of the this episode and I'm just like. So you're definitely doing a season three. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And, you know, they didn't have to confirm anything. It just when you say yeah. summon Prince Lotor, you're not going to say that without having long term plans. <laughs> summon Prince Lotor. OK, good night, everybody. It's been nice. It's been fun. <laughs> right. <laughs> See you forever. So, um, and yeah, we talked about it on the news episode that they've confirmed. I think it was 78 episodes, 76. Yeah, 78? I think something like that. <clears throat> um, good long. run. Right. And just this week, they confirmed season three, which I guess they announced before, but didn't confirm or whatever it was. They've confirmed it at WonderCon recently. Um, yeah. They didn't give a date. It will be this year, 2017. Yeah. yeah, it'll be in the fall probably. Yeah, and I think you, you and I both speculated we'll hear much more at uh, um, uh, San Diego, San Diego Con, Comic yeah. Con. So, and I'm, I'm thinking maybe because the original show debuted. La- not last. It was. I guess it was last year, huh? Yeah. On my birthday, actually, on the 30th. So. Of September. So I'm thinking we'll probably look at like a September or October launch for this. So, <clears throat> yeah. Well, and seeing how this, these two seasons have really felt like a single season, really. I mean, yeah. And it, I, I think they probably never stopped production. I, I think they probably, yep, did this entire season and they are probably well into season three at this point. Sure. And honestly, I think the only reason we didn't get a full 26 episodes as opposed to the 13 we got is maybe they just wanted to test the waters a little bit at first. And that's why we only got, um, you know, the, how it was kind of split. And so many people have said how it seemed like a split season, not in a bad way, but you could just tell there was a, you know, the narrative kind of kept going through it. It, Um, The first part of season one, you could tell it was a little more tentative there. Yeah. I mean, they, they've been blown away with the numbers, I'm sure. And that's why you don't, you don't just get like a 78 episode order. (laughs) Right. Unless there's numbers to back it up. And actually, I think I'm looking at this wrong way. Here's what I here's what probably happened. I mean, they brought on people from the Legend of Korra. They knew it was going to be good because Legend of Korra, Legend of Korra, is critically acclaimed and people like it. It, get, it get, got ratings. That, well, I think it did. I don't know. Maybe they would have continued if it got better ratings. So I'm my guess would be Netflix saw the first half of the season was like, we're getting this out now. We need this out because we need this is yeah. good. We need to go with this. <laughs> so maybe that was what it was. But again, Netflix doesn't. They don't have to, you know, we don't even know how many people watch shows like Game or House of Cards and stuff. A lot of people do. They get a lot of subscribers out of it. Otherwise, these shows wouldn't be on, but they're not telling anybody nothing. So we are. Yeah, but they they wouldn't keep funding it if it didn't make them money. Absolutely. And that's the point. I just wish I knew, you know, does it get better ratings than, say, an Agents of (laughs) S.H.I.E.L.D.? Which God only knows if they renew that show. So. I would guarantee it gets better ratings. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a. I, I'm not doubting that for a second. That for sure. So, yeah. all right. Uh, anything else? No, I just I'm now after doing this again. I'm even more hyped for season three. <laughs> no, <laughs> maybe we should have d- delayed this little project until about August. <laughs> I kid, I kid. But yeah, well, now we have time to go back and do sure. season one, right? And hopefully, we'll get to do a feedback episode. People, hint, hint. So, hint, hint, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Um, so yeah, we will. We ourselves don't 100 percent know what we're doing next. Um, we would like to do an episode one or season one thing, uh, but if we can get a, like a 
feedback episode in there. So we'll figure out our plan. Let us know. We, yeah. we, we know people are downloading the episodes. We see it. <laughs> so, you know, talk back to us. Yes. Uh, and I would be remiss if I didn't mention the transmissions discord um, server Yeah, where there is a Voltron channel. Um, join us there. Talk to us. Jason and I are both in there. Um, go to transmissionspodcast.com slash chat. And if you've never used discord, it's basically just a chat system. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, you can do voice chats too. It's, it's um, been a lot of fun and just join us there. Talk about whatever. I mean, we have Voltron, obviously Transformers. Um, they've even created a Rick and Morty channel recently. So Morty, it, um, just come in and talk with us. It's a lot of fun. Yep, absolutely. Um, uh, yeah, it's it's easy. No problem there. And it's, you know, at, you can at somebody and talk to them directly and stuff like that. So, yeah, it works. Well, and, and they have apps for everything. Yeah. Every every platform, mobile um desktop just even if you just want to use the web it, it's just it's so easy yep so yeah nice shout out to discord there the guys on transmissions have been doing using it for a while and it seems to work pretty well i'm pretty sure it might start getting integrated into the uh Povacacy system especially if skype keeps being skype <laughs> so we'll see how that yeah. goes but yeah skype is great yeah indeed so yeah without any further ado we will uh i, I will talk and we'll figure out what's going on next and we'll throw down the twitter and everything but i think you can expect you can expect season one season one will happen um so it'll probably be heck you might hear it next week after this episode so we'll see what happens or we can do feedback if you guys tell us <laughs> stuff to say i can't hit enough here people i'm winking and everything so and with that i'll say goodbye thanks for joining us on this uh, journey through season two and we'll check you out next time It's been fun. It has. Bye. Bye.